Well, welcome everyone back to Seder Sugyot. Um, we're getting toward the end of our of our course. Today's uh, today's de today's class is dedicated um, by Gita Neufeld. For generations, women have had a seat at the Seder table, sometimes reclining and sometimes not. Rabbanit Michelle and Hadron have now given us a seat at the Shender as well. With great deep gratitude to Rabbanit Michelle, the Hadron staff, and my virtual chavruta Shoshana Baker, and wishing all a meaningful, happy, and healthy Pesach. May we all soon marry to be a part of a Seder which revolves around the Avodah in the Beit HaMikdash. Gita Neufeld. Thank you, Gita, for the dedication. Um, last week, we learned about the Magid section, about telling the story. And if you recall, we ended our class with two interesting sources. One was Ravan Gamliel, who says that if you haven't said the following three things, you haven't fulfilled your obligation. And that, that was part of a Mishnah, which made it into the Seder. And those three things were Pesach, Matzah, and Maror. Those are going to be the focus of today's class from a bit of a different perspective. If you recall, we ended our learning with this interesting source of the Yabetz, who basically said that the um, that part of what's unique about the Seder is that telling the story we usually think is done by verbalizing. But we also learn what he said is that the Seder is actually done, the telling of the story by actions. And that's a little bit different from just telling the story, but we're actually acting it out. And by actually eating in the time of the temple, eating the sacrifice. And when it comes to eating the matzah and maror, which we still do today. So today we're going to focus specifically on the eating of the matzah and the maror and how it was done in the time of the temple and how it's done today. Now, both are mentioned in the Torah. Both matzah and maror are supposed to be eaten at the Seder night, according to Torah law. However, Maror is only mentioned in the context, and you're going to see today, in the context of verses that discuss the Korban Pesach. And it's supposed to be eaten at the same time as the Korban Pesach is eaten together with matzah and maror. So today we're going to talk a little bit about the fact that maror, in the time, this is actually something we have to take as, as, a, as a given. And we're not going to really discuss the details of this. That comes up in Daf Kuvchat. Maybe we'll get to that in the last class of our, of our, uh, of our course. But for now, we're going to just assume that it's a given that maror, once there's no longer a sacrifice, it's no longer a Torah obligation. Now, matzah is different. Even though it's mentioned in the verses together with the Korban Pesach, the matzah is actually singled out in other verses where it talks about eating matzah independent of the sacrifice. And therefore, matzah is still by Torah law an obligation on Seder night. Now, you might say, why is that so important? Well, you'll see later today in the sources why it's very important to understand that maror is only rabbinic at this point and matzah is only is still by Torah law. That's number one that you need to know before we start. Now, one thing we do at the Seder, okay, this is just review. I'm sure you're all familiar with this, but just in case you're not in good review, is that what we do at the Seder is we wash, we eat matzah, we make a bracha, alachilat matzah, and hamotzi, we make two blessings. And then we eat the maror, where we say just alachilat maror because we already made the blessing, Abore Priyadama and the Karpas, if you remember, we discussed that when we talked about Karpas. And then we do the famous Hillel sandwich, right? We take the matzah and we take the maror and we eat them together. Okay, now, the general question you might ask is, why do we do the Hillel sandwich? But the question might actually be a little different. And the question might be, why don't we do only the Hillel sandwich? And why do we take the matzah separately and the maror separately? So today I'm gonna to show you as usual that sometimes we have to shift our perspective a little. What we think is such a given, like we think, oh, it's obvious. Eating the matzah by itself is the main mitzvah and eating the maror by itself is the main mitzvah and doing like Hillel is just kind of an extra thing. So the question is, is that really the case? And maybe that really should have been the central way of eating it, only eating them together. And the question more becomes, why don't we do it like that? And why do we do it differently? Why do we do it actually in both ways? So today we're going to learn the sugya that's going to teach us about this, and we're going to get off onto an interesting topic about mitzvot in general. Possibly it's about mitzvot in general, we'll see. And with that, I'm going to send you into chavruta, and we'll have an 18-minute chavruta to start tonight. 